This is Robert Gleeman with EMR Update, and I'm talking today with Mark Anderson of the AC Group, a consulting group for EMR. And session one is entitled, How do you determine what type of EHR you need? So Mark, thank you very much for uh, being with us. How do you determine what type of EHR you need? Uh, there are tools out there that help the doctor go through and really sit down with each one of the product categories, for instance, laboratory, e-prescribing, patient summary documents, to really get a good understanding of what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. So if you look at, say, e-prescribing and describe e-prescribing in five different uh, categories from I don't need e-prescribing at all, all the way up to I want to be able to do e-prescribing with formulary compliance, uh, generic drug tracking, looking at the cost of the medication with clinical and national best practices, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can come up with a way of, of looking at each one of these categories and rating each one of the categories from one to five, it's a very easy to determine how sophisticated a system you want or how unsophisticated you really need today. How should the doctor determine uh, the, the phrase EHR versus EMR? I really look at it two different ways. If it's important to go back and track the real health of a patient, in other words, you want to do health maintenance alerts, you want to look at tracking diabetic patients and people with hypertension, you probably need more of an electronic health record because they have registry information and personal health records for looking at the health of the patient. Mm -hmm. If you're more of an orthopedic surgeon or some people that really are there to treat the medical conditions and you're not as worried about the health of the patient, then, you, you know, an EMR is a much better choice for a lot of those doctors. Okay. Can you tell us what the types are? Are there categories? Yeah, we kind of break it into a couple categories. One is a baseline charting system. Uh, basically, it's like a lot like the soap note type of process where I want to be able to take what I used to write down and basically put it into a computer system. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for clinical alerts to come out. I'm not looking for clinical decision support. And usually they, don't, they do not include E&M coding and don't include LOINC compliant tracking of laboratory results. Mm -hmm. Then you've got what's more of an EMR light application, the next step up. That basically has some of clinical alerts involved in there. It may have some clinical decision support, but more importantly, it does have formulary compliance and it does receive lab results from LabCorp, Quest, and other hospitals. Mm -hmm. Then you got EMR products that actually are a step up from there, and again, EHR products. So there are four or five different levels of products that are out there, and again, it's up to the, the challenge with the doctors is figure out what they really want today and what are they going to need for the future. How many choices would you say a solo practitioner realistically has to look at out there? Well, if you look at the vend of the 386 vendors in our database, there's probably 300 of them that say they sell to the solo practitioner. And again, the price will range anywhere from you know $300 to $18,000 for just for the software application. Mm -hmm. So there, there are, right now, there's just too many choices for the doctors. Hopefully, we're going to work with EMR Update and maybe put that actual survey document online uh, so that the doctors can actually just fill out the form, you know, automatically using the EMR Update website, which would basically tell them what kind of system they need. So mm -hmm. it would only take them as much time as it takes to fill out the survey. The survey is about 40 questions, and basically each question is a separate category. And mm -hmm. based on how they answer the question, they'll know exactly what type of product they're looking for. After answering only 40 questions, do you think that you could guide most people to a, a selection of a top 10 list? Yeah, I think we can get them to a top 10 list. You know, the challenge is getting from 10 down to the top three or four takes a little bit more because they have to really, there's a lot of uh, extra factors that are out mm -hmm. there. Give me an example of some of the questions you would ask a doctor. One of the questions deals with their current practice management system. In other words, are you looking to replace your practice management with a fully integrated product, or are you going to keep your current product and just have an interface? That makes changes in the vendors, because some vendors only sell integrated products. They're not going to sell one product or another. Another question always for small practices is price. If the practice management system works today, don't replace it. You don't want to mess with the account.
accounts receivable and mess with the doctor's reimbursement coming in. If it works, stay with it. Because uh, most of the EMR products will work fine with almost any practice management system out there. The only difference is, is if when a patient goes to schedule an appointment, would you like to have health maintenance alerts show up in the appointment scheduler? So when Mr. Jones calls in and says, I'm, my stomach is hurting, I'd like to come and see a doctor, the scheduling system pops up in, from the EMR data and says, oh, Mr. Jones, you're 53, I see you haven't had this test, this test, and this test. Can we schedule them all at the same time? If you want that kind of functionality, then you really need to have an integrated system. That's a very good point. Get to the point of creating new revenue coming in, and for those family physicians, internal medicine, and pediatricians who are you know, looking at more at health quality indicators and pay for performance, if I can get the patient to schedule those health and maintenance tests up front, you're going to get much better compliance than waiting for them to show up and trying to get those tests scheduled while the patient's there. They don't have time to get those tests done. They want to leave and go on to something else. Is it something you have to do face-to-face, -face, or can you do this over the phone with someone? No, I mean, I, for our smaller practices, really most practices under five doctors, okay. you know, I'd say 99% of the time it's done, you know, through a telephone consultation and sending files back and forth. It keeps the cost down to very little and, and does give you that third-party validation of what's really going on out there. Can you give a doctor some upfront pricing uh, as far as how much it's going to cost to work with you and how much the EMR is going to be? Can they get a pretty good idea? Yeah, with ours, it's pretty easy. We have kind of a set price depending on the size of the practice and stuff. And for the software vendors, we have basic, I would say, pretty thorough pricing on about 110 vendor products. Yeah, most practices don't have time to look at 10, 10 vendors. They want to look at which are the three or four that really meet our requirements today. Mm -hmm. You're looking at all those different parameters out there because then you're really looking at usability of the product. How simple is it to figure out, you know, you know how much... How simple can I figure it out? How simple can my staff figure out the product? Could a, could a doctor just call you up on the phone like I'm doing and chat with you a little bit for free? Oh, yeah. I, I, we get, I probably get uh, 10 calls a day from, usually from small practices wanting to know, you know, I've got a question about this vendor. I'm, I'm looking at these kind of things. What's, what do you think I should do? We provide, you know, I won't call it free consultation, but it's free. Well, we basically are good at providing guidance on what to watch out for. You know, we know some of the vendors, some of the highly rated vendors out there in our survey are having major problems with installing the products effectively. So it's really giving them guidance on what to watch out for, what to you know, communicate. A lot of times it's just communication barriers. Everything gets done effectively at the end, but you may have that first three months, six months where everybody is so frustrated because miscommunication on who's going to do what, it's really the expectation gets set very high, and it doesn't take long for the doctor to get dissatisfied with certain things. You need the, the extra detail. I mean, it's good to go back and look at end-user satisfaction surveys from you know, AFP and class and other kind of things. You need to find out what are the gotchas. What, what things do you really need to watch out for on that? And it's hard to get that out of a survey. You really need to talk to a number of people are people like us who talk to you know, hundreds of practices every month on what's going what's going right and what's going wrong. And our philosophy has always been, let's find out what's going wrong so we can learn what, what mistakes other people have done so we can teach people how to avoid those mistakes. But what would you say to someone who's on the fence? Well, you know, we just finished a survey of about 6,000 doctors, and we found only 25% of them really do want a full EHR product. So what you're saying is very consistent. There's a lot of doctors that aren't, they haven't decided this is the right thing for them. And that's where you really got to sit down and figure out the true value back to the physician. You know, getting back into cost, you know, benefits, clinical quality indicators. If doctors don't see the true benefits of these products, uh, they're not going to go forward with it. The doctors that have implemented, that have seen the values, are getting great benefits out of it. If it's not simple to use, and if, it, if the doctor feels it's going to slow them down, I don't care how many bells and whistles you have. Can this be fun, Mark? Oh, I think it actually is fun, especially for the, the practices that have taken this, and you see how well their operations have changed. 